hi, Purple Ella here and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about autism and friendships. So a little bit of a different location filming wise for me today. I'm just sat here next to my nice cosy wood burner because I've had a bit of an intense couple of weeks between um, working at the Women and Girls Conference in Manchester last week and all of the malarkey that happened around that. If you follow my channels you'll know all about that and um, other stuff that's going on and the run up to Christmas and I'm just feeling a little bit like I need to sort of take care of myself and stay cosy and nice at the moment so I'm do spending a lot of time in my house with my cat and um, that means that it can be quite tif difficult when I'm feeling like that to maintain my friendships and in general I would have to say as an autistic woman that my experience of friendships has been that it can be quite a challenging area for me. Um, I think there's a little bit of a common misconception that autistic people don't have the desire to have friendships and whilst of course that can be true I think there's also neurotypical people who don't have the desire to have friendships so I think there's just people that want to have friendships and people that don't want to have friendships and some of them are autistic and some of them are not. So now that we've cleared that up I would say that I am definitely very socially motivated in that I really like being around other people and I crave that kind of company but I'm not necessarily particularly skilled at initiating friendships, developing friendships and then maintaining friendships and so there have been times in my life where maintaining those friendships or keeping those friendships hasn't worked out for me and I found that really really upsetting. So to start with starting point for me when I received my autism diagnosis in terms of kind of looking at the kinds of relationships that I have and where I might be going wrong, where I might be going right, what, what I could fine tune about that was that I think that basically initially prior to knowing that I was autistic my approach to other people outside of my family was um, a little bit like a puppy. So I would basically be like like me, like me, like me, without giving any kind of, to everyone that I, that I knew, without giving any kind of thought to A, whether we were well suited to have a relationship, B, whether I liked them, or C, whether I had room or space in my life for more kinds of relationships. So what I ended up with was a lot of rejection, where I had kind of naturally assumed that everybody that I encountered was my friend and then felt rejected when that wasn't the case and things happened that showed me that wasn't the case. And also a massive amount of overwhelm and overstimulation and overburn in trying to maintain an, an uh, unrealistic number of relationships within my life, particularly once I'd got the children and Mr Purple and other people to consider as part of my day-to-day -day life. So I basically had like a massive overhaul of how I look at relationships and what kinds of relationships I want to have. So historically, I've basically, this is going to sound really awful, basically been friends with whoever would be friends with me. And that's not to say that, in case any of you are watching, that my old friends aren't valuable friendships. Because of course, if you throw um, a ball enough times, you're going to hit what what am i on about but if you if you if you become friends with enough enough people you are going to hit people that are suited to you anyway just through statistics and likelihood so obviously i did end up with some good friends but what i also ended up with was a lot of people who may not necessarily have liked me people who may have felt, seen me as a little bit of a charity case or you know she struggles let's be friends with her and people right to the extreme of people that were actually quite toxic for me and not really not really beneficial to my life so especially because and I don't know about um, you but I am a problem solver and a fixer so if someone comes to me and they're like oh I've got this problem that I need fixing my instinct whatever level of relationship with them that I've got is to go yes let me sort your life out let me put my life on hold and sort your life out and so I ended up with sort of a proportion of people that I think in enjoyed that aspect of my personality which wasn't necessarily in my own best interests so Basically what we had pre-diagnosis was me surrounded by a large number of people, which is very fortunate, but you know, a percentage of those people not necessarily being the healthiest relationships that I could consider. So, I'm not going to claim to be there yet, just as a starting point, and at the end of the video I'll talk a little bit about the difficulties I'm still having and how I need to move forward with that. But what I did after my diagnosis was I basically, initially, learnt the different levels of relationship. 
and I learned this from the internet and from a book. So the different levels of relationship as I understand it now are acquaintance, good acquaintance, potential friend, emerging friendship, friend, close friend. So that's six different layers and everybody that you encounter in your day-to-day -day life is going to fall into one of those categories. And where I was definitely going wrong was mistaking acquaintances and good acquaintances for friends. So acquaintances are the people that you're going to meet every day, the people that you're going to run into on the school run, the people that deliver your mail, the people that you maybe work in your regular corner shop that you visit every day, your children, if you've got children, their swimming teachers and their teachers although they could potentially also fall into the professional category, but you know, if you have a relationship that's quite friendly with them, everybody that you encounter as a byproduct of your day-to-day -day life without any deliberation is an acquaintance. Then when it goes on to the next level, where they're, they're part, you're seeing them just as a byproduct of your life, but you have a nice relationship with them. You Maybe you sit with them at the swimming pool and you chat with them while your children do lessons, or maybe you do a hobby together and whenever you do this hobby together as part of a group, you always get on well. That's a good acquaintance, which can then very much be taken on to the potential friendship. When you're starting to have this kind of relationship with someone, maybe there's a potential friendship there and that's great and you can explore that in an emerging friendship which is where you and that person make deliberate plans to see each other outside of what you would normally run into them anyway and in addition to that where you and this person make an equal amount of effort to develop that emerging friendship brilliant so far you with me so far so then from emerging friendship sometimes it might not work out you might realize actually we're not that well suited and that person can then go back to being a good acquaintance fine just don't make any more plans with them just leave them in that category or perhaps they turn into a friend which is a relationship in which as i've said you're making an equal amount of effort and you're making deliberate plans to see each other and you're treating each other with consideration and respect friendship then the next level is close friendship so, in a friendship, you're going to share stuff, but you're not necessarily going to share, unless you're me and you know you share the innermost details of your life on the internet, but you're not necessarily going to share private things, deeply private things with this person. You're not necessarily going to be the person that they call when they go into hospital and they need someone to drive them there. You're in the friends. That's fine. That's fine. We all need some of those. And then, with a select few people, maybe two, maybe three, maybe up to five people if you haven't got a family to deal with as well, are going to be in that close friends category where they are the people that you are going to tell when you're struggling. They are the people that you're going to tell your private thoughts and feelings to. They're the people that you're going to call when you're in trouble and you need a friend. Those are your close friendships and as far as I'm concerned, if you've got some people in that category, you are very blessed and hold on to them tight if they're good relationships because those close friends to me are the thing that really really makes the difference to my day-to-day -day life and my day-to-day -day functioning so you guys know who you are thank you anyway um and then you know so those are the levels of relationships so i figured that out and then what i did was i made a spreadsheet now i would love to show you my spreadsheet but i've had a look for it and i don't think i have the spreadsheet anymore i think the spreadsheet was a starting point so what i would suggest you do is make a spreadsheet or make a chart i mean you know i'm not suggesting really actually because this is possibly a little bit nuts but you could <laughs> make a list of everyone in your life who you maybe consider a friend put them in the chart figure out which category do they actually belong to, which category would you like them to belong to. Perhaps there's someone who's actually in the good acquaintance category that you think, I'd like to have a friendship with them. Make that first move, invite them out for coffee, brilliant. So, make a list of that, figure out who your friends are, make a list of your friends. Now, what I have done, and I can't show you because I'm actually using my phone to film this video right now, sorry, a little bit of an interruption in that my phone, which I'm filming on, decided to ring, so. Where was I? What I have done is on my phone, I have a list of my contacts and I found that a little bit stressful because it's everyone and anyone from the parents of my children's friends to my doctor to my, you know, um, and I found that really difficult because if I was looking, oh, I would like to spend some time with someone, 
I wouldn't know where to start. So what I have done is on my contacts list on my phone, I have put a little rainbow next to everybody who fitted into the friend category on my spreadsheet. That is fantastic. I think today I've got something like nine or ten friends. About two of, two of them? Yeah, probably about two of them fit into the close friends category. So that's really special and I feel really blessed and lucky. Now if you want to take this whole spreadsheet thing a teeny leeny weeny little bit further, let's talk about managing those friendships. So, friendship is about give and take. It is about seeing the person. It is about having a relationship and that means putting in some effort. And I find that because I've got a family, I've got three children, I've got a partner, I've got a mother-in-law, I've got a mother, I've got people that are in my family that I need to keep in touch with, sometimes I can find it quite tricky to manage those friendships in terms of time manage, simple time management and who do I need to see and how long has it been since... So if you really want to take your spreadsheet, spreadsheet to another level, you could then make your list of friends, put at the top of that list of friends the person that you saw... At the bottom of the list of the friends, the person you saw most recently, top of the list of the friends, the person you saw longest ago. So then you know that person is the person I haven't seen for a really long time, that's the person I'm going to get in touch with when I've got a bit of free time. Once you've seen them, move them to the bottom. So you've basically got this rotating list of friends and you are seeing them kind of in order. Now I don't necessarily, I used to do that, I don't necessarily do that now because I've got people that I see sporadically, people that are part of my day-to-day -day life that I see almost daily, people that I see a couple of times a week, so it just doesn't really work like that for me. But if you're not in that position and you have a list of friends and you want to make sure you're being fair and you're seeing everyone, keep that list, literally put the person at the top who you need to, is the person you need to see next and it makes it really straightforward. So, in short, spreadsheet your friends, totally normal. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> anyway, so having organised who my friends are, who my acquaintances are, etc., I the area that I am still struggling in is level of contact, amount of amount of relationship basically, because I need time on my own, but I am the worst for a agreeing to time on my own. When I get enough time on my own, and we're talking several hours at least a day, if not a whole day a few times a week, I function better. I'm less overwhelmed, I'm less overstimulated, I have less meltdowns, I feel happier, definitely I need this. However, my instinct when I'm going to be alone is to go, oh, better see someone, can't be alone, that's not functioning as a functional and successful human being, must see a friend, that'll prove that I'm a successful human being, must see a friend, and I overdo it all the time. Despite knowing this, despite years of knowing this, I still don't get enough downtime. It's that simple. And, and in addition to that, I've got chronic fatigue syndrome, so I also need rest, but I don't give myself the time to do that because I'm so worried, and this is the crux of why I do this, I am so worried that if I don't see my friends often enough, they are not going to be friends with me anymore. That I overdo it in order to fit people in because I look into the future and I go, it could, if I don't fit this in today, it could be six months before I see this person again and then if it goes on like that and it goes on for too long, then we won't have a friendship anymore and I'm going to lose this friend and I really love this person and I don't want that. So even though what I need is time on my own, I'm going to squeeze them in. And Yes, there are times that that is the right thing to do when your friend needs you, but 90% of the time, I would imagine if I asked any one of my friends, they would say, don't be ridiculous, Ella. Well, they might be nicer about it than that, but they would say, don't be silly. We will see you when you have time to see you. We are your friends. You aren't going to lose us. But I am so worried after so many years of experience of people just ditching me because of a thoughtless thing that I said or because I didn't remember something like their birthday or because I... Are people ditching me because of things that are connected with my autism, because I'm an oversharer, because I'm not typical, that even though I now have a really nice, secure bunch of friends who I really logically know I can count on, I still have those feelings that basically I am just one screw-up away from losing any one of my friends. So that's a real shame, and I know that that's an issue that I really need to work on and be more confident about. And the other aspect in there that I briefly mentioned was the whole maintenance of birthdays and going out on birthdays and remembering birthday presents and remembering Christmas and I am rubbish at these things. I 
put my hands up. I wish that I was not because I know it's important to make my friends to feel like I care about them. And I know that that's one of the ways I can do that. But I just forget. I have poor executive functioning. I have a huge amount of responsibility with my children in terms of what my executive functioning is capable of managing. And those things slip through the cracks. So for example, one of my definitely close, close friends has a birthday this weekend and I love this person. She is an amazing friend and she has been like 100% a good friend to me over the last couple of years. And nonetheless, I had a bit of a panic this morning because I hadn't organized anything for her birthday. Now, fortunately, I have actually managed to organize something for her birthday through the power of having already had an idea of what I wanted to get her and Amazon Prime. So hopefully that's going to be here in time for me to give to her tomorrow or Saturday. But even so, I'm like, this is one, one of three, one of two even maybe, of people of my closest, closest friends and I have not got it together to remember her birthday until she says to me, it's my birthday on Saturday. So that is lame and I know that I'm bad at that and I really struggle with that and if anyone has any solutions for this particular problem, I would really love to hear about them. <laughs> and don't tell me about birthday calendars because I will just not look at it. So it needs to be a solution that's part of my, already part of my organisation. So maybe that's not possible. Anyway, so what do you think about friendships? Are you an autistic person that craves social company like I do? Or are you someone who prefers to not be dealing with any of that stuff? Let me know in the comments box below. Also, if you found this video useful or you can relate to it at all, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so that you get notified when my video comes in every Thursday. Thank you for following. I, as I said last week, I want to hit a thousand subscribers uh, as my target for then uh, committing to buying some light, proper lighting and I think I hit like 922 this morning, so you guys are rocking it on helping me get to that target, so that's really exciting, and thank you, so keep up the good work, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.